temptation, it turns me on. A life is a playground, it's hard to stay strong. All this temptation. What's up, boss? What's up, what's up, dude? How's it going? Pretty good, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing really great. How was your performance on Monday? Uh, it went really well, man. It went really well. It was our first one, and uh, it was excellent. I totally really wish I could have been there. Too young, though. Yeah, next time, man. Next time, yeah. definitely. So what are you? What are you, in high school? High school, senior year in Jersey, baby. Wow. Where in New Jersey? Um, Morris County. Okay. I'm from Huntington County originally. Where is that? South or north? Uh, it's northwest. Oh, okay, okay. Never, uh, let's see. I don't think I've been up there. It's out in the country. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, uh, I don't think I've visited that part of Jersey. We were born you and raised in Jersey. Yeah, getting some exclusive interviews in high school. Not bad. Here we go, here we go. Got to start early. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Is this what you, uh, is this what you want to do? This kind of thing? Well, uh, definitely going to go into music business. Um, I don't know where in music business. I love the entire industry, working with artists. I love the scene. Um, I don't know. Wherever it takes me, see where this blog goes. I don't know. Play it by ear. You're on the right track. <laughs> thanks, thanks. So, uh, you were born and raised in Jersey? Yeah, I was. Uh, my parents were born and raised as well, so I'm like very homegrown, you know? Yeah, yeah. What role did music play in your life? Um, it was a huge role of my entire life. But it wasn't until later on that I realized that's what I wanted to do with my whole life. I was a, a big jock in high school and growing up, so I played baseball and basketball. But, you know, my dad, my dad was signed in like 1980 to RCA Records, so he always was playing music and, uh, you know, he had a radio show. You know, there was always eclectic music going on all over my house growing up. So it just, it, it carried with me always, and it was always probably the most important thing in my life, but it wasn't until I was like 18 that I realized this is like my obsession, you know? So like why fashion? Like what made you go into the fashion world then? Um, I, uh, it kind of came to me. I was uh, on vacation one time, and this woman came up to me, and she's like, you know, you should be a model. And I said, what do you mean? I'm a basketball player, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, I looked into it, and it went great. And it was a great stepping stone to get into New York City. You know, I grew up in a really small town, like really like a lot of farmland. And although we were close to New York City, still really far. So the day I graduated, well, actually, my senior year of high school, I was commuting like three or four times a week into the city. And, uh, you know, doing the whole thing. You know, it was great. It was awesome. I traveled. I lived in Europe for a little while. It was the perfect transition from, you know, being a kid to being an adult living in New York City. So you didn't go to college at all? No, no, no. My sisters went to, like, University of Chicago. Very, uh, you know, um, very academic. And she's just finishing up her PhD now. I just didn't go down that road. <laughs> so, um, what made like what was the decision of leaving the industry to go into the music industry, which is equally as hard? Yeah, really hard. Um, I had a band. I had a band called Monument, which was my like life. And uh, you know, when I was nineteen, I started the band, and it, I just became obsessed with it. I wanted because I started writing songs. I started singing every day, and. It was, I really came to the realization that this is definitely what I wanted to do with my whole life. And I was doing really well in, in modeling and essentially had to give it all up to, because I knew how much it was going to take to get to where I am now. Like, so I really had to sacrifice a lot and a lot of people were, Xander, what are you doing? You know, you have this great career going on here. You know, why this? And, you know, and in the beginning, it wasn't very easy. You know, I didn't really know what I was doing and just really went head first and just kept getting better and better and better and better. So what was that? Did you just like perform all over the city or? or yeah, I had, a, I had a lot of connections just through, you know, wheeling and dealing in the city and just meeting people through fashion. So I could get shows really quickly. And I played a lot of shows that a normal person especially with such little experience like myself, like they couldn't get these shows. So I was lucky in a sense, but it was really my education, so to speak, musically, because that's really where I kind of 
found my voice, found everything, seeing these rock songs. Was it a long time uh, when you were done with your band to like ultimately making your EP? Yeah, it was a really long time. There was a lot of ups and downs. My band changed a lot. I was really the guy. I was writing the songs. I was booking the shows. I was bringing my friends to the shows. I was making the flyers. I was taking the photography. I was editing the photography. I was making the MySpace page. I was making everything. The website. I did literally everything. And as the time went along, you know, I would lose my guitarist and I'd get a better guitarist. I'd lose my drummer. I'd get a better drummer. And it just kept getting better and better and better to, uh, you know, a bunch of shit went down to the point where I had a deal and that deal fell through. And then I decided, you know, I'm doing everything myself. Why not just go solo and be who I am? Cause I'm already doing so much. And that was the first time I worked with producers and I started working with, like, with your band or being solo just myself. And uh, I went to Los Angeles and I started working with some producers and it was just such an incredible experience for me because I was always confined to the musicians in my band and, you know, I wanted to use all of my influences, which is rock and roll, it's electronic music, I love dance music, I love 80s pop, you know, there's a lot of different things that I like and uh, you bring them all together and then you have... Um, what I was able to do with a producer that I could never do with my band. So that was a really great experience. About a year after that, you know, just working with a lot of people, I ended up, I wrote this song called Temptation, which is the song that caught the ears of Red One. And as soon as he heard it, he was just like, boom. So I want working in. with Red One first and then came the label, or you had the label, then you... Uh, no, it was Red One first. Uh, my manager is um was was heavily involved with Lady Gaga and um he's very tied in with with Red One I mean they're partners and he's the one that was they're actually listening to their first demo of Temptation while they were in the studio with Lady Gaga doing Bad Romance and they called me from the studio in London and said yo this is this is it so so I was working with Red, we did three songs, it was like instant chemistry, we wrote this song called Dancing Around This Love, the first night we met, which is a huge, huge hit, and we wrote Temptation, we wrote Find You Again, and then we reproduced Temptation, and, uh, and yeah, man, and then after that, that's when we went to Jimmy Iovine's house, and uh, the rest is... Oh, Jimmy Iovine, just nonchalantly, that's awesome. Yeah, man. Um, what is it like working with the, arguably the top producer in the world currently? It's amazing, man. It's oh, it's really overwhelming because you know I've been doing this. I've been working with him for a long time. You know, it's been almost. Uh, it's been about a year, a little bit more than a year, and we've recorded this album in eight different countries. I was actually on tour with Lady Gaga while he was working on her second album. So he would work with her one for a little bit, then he'd come to me, and then you know it was back and forth. Just kind of a surreal experience, given how big you know she is, and we'd have dinner, and she doesn't like me very much. But really? yeah, why is that? I, I don't know. She's she's very protective of Red, you know, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of things. Uh, so you're working. <laughs> she's, your she's really smart. I have so much, I have a lot of respect for for Lady Gaga. She's incredible. Mm -hmm. So are you working on your debut album now? I finished, man. I oh, finished. Done. And uh, yeah, it's just getting mixed and mastered right now in London by Rob Orton, the same guy who did all of Lady Gaga's records. And uh, we're just about to lift off. Um, we're, we're deciding on my single in the next uh, couple weeks. And once that's done, we're going to shoot the music video and we're going to be good to go. Wow. Um, oh my God, that's crazy. I can't believe that you're working with all these people. Um, that's so nuts, man. So where you where do you go from here? Like, what's the dream in like five years to be at? Um, wow, there's there's so much, man. There, there, there's so much that I want to do, and just by being inside and seeing, you know, I have a real unique opportunity because we live in a world right now in pop music that's just dominated by female vocalists, and it's yeah. all it's Lady Gaga, it's Kesha, it's Katy Perry, it's uh, Britney Spears. There's 
there's dozens and dozens of these female singers, and as far as guys, there's really nothing, you know, especially there's in the truly kind of, no pop artists right now, no male pop artists. Yeah, and I come from the rock world, so it's a little bit more rock, and I feel like people are ready to embrace kind of a more like rock and roll pop thing. And the combination with the rock that I bring and then the pop that Red One brings, I mean, this album is fucking crazy. It's really insane. And everybody at the label, I mean, everyone knows how big this is going to be. So it's, uh, we're not trying to rush it. We're not trying to like just, even though it's going to all be happening really soon, I've got this great band and we're starting to play. We were booking a bunch of different shows throughout the area. We're probably going to showcase in LA in June. And, you know, it's just going to be like a slow, build instead of just like throwing it out there and then like you know it needs to be an organic thing which is why we're, we're working the online presence but you know in five years i want to be the biggest star in the world and uh you know i want to just have creative control to really push the boundaries you know for this first album it is my wildest dream i'm living my wildest dream right now it's crazy that's very cool man so when should we expect the album um, let's see, um, if you can expect the album, uh, I would say in the fall, the fall, late summer, fall, and, um, but a single in the next month or so, wow. so we're going to probably try to put out two singles before the album, like a Just Dance and a Poker Face, and, and then have the album just be really big. That's awesome. I'm so excited for you, man. I am so pumped for your music. Yeah, man. That's thank you. Have you? What have you heard? Have you listened to all the little snippets and stuff? Oh, yeah, I listen to your older stuff. Um, I really like so different Eloisa. I like yeah. that. That's so different from what you are now, but I love it. Yeah, um, yeah. The cohesiveness with everything. I've really developed my voice. My voice has come a long way in the last few years. But my writing style is kind of similar, but with the the Red One production and the new drums, it's... Yeah, yeah. It, I could see where the sound totally changed, where on your EP, it was great, and all the genres meshed, and then now it's just like, bam, it's in your face and ready to go. Definitely, definitely. Cool, brother. All right, man, we'll stay in touch. Thank you very much. So how am I going to be able to, to read some of some stuff? Are you going to... Make me sound cool? I will definitely make you sound cool. Um, definitely look out for probably this weekend. Sometimes. All right, cool, man. Help spread the word. I you will know? definitely. Thank you so much, dude. Yeah, no problem, bro. Peace out, man. All I need this morning.